Carl and Kenya Stevens have been married for 22 years, but 11 years ago they decided to make a big change and have turned their lifestyle into their livelihood. For me, open relating and polyamory benefit my relationship in numerous ways. They now have multiple partners. Oh, yes! You look like my type! Bubbles! And run a successful love academy. What's going on in your relationship? I'm desiring another man. This is make or break for them. What we do in the Love Academy is we educate people in what we call the new paradigm of love. But as they stray together, can they help their clients stay together? Maybe it would be beautiful if I had another lover. Luna's like, do you think you guys will have sex? And I was like, honestly, I don't know. There's still some hurts around that of when it comes to trust. Are these hard questions? Can we pause for a second? You guys have 15 minutes. Carl and Kenya met at university 22 years ago. Kenya and I met on a blind date. She matched a vision I had of the woman I was going to marry. I was very physically attracted to her. I wanted to have sex with her right away. It was love at first sight. He was really handsome and really smart. Eight weeks after we met, we actually got engaged. Three kids and a decade into their marriage, Carl came home and revealed a secret that would change their relationship forever. <laughs> Carl came home and told me that he was falling in love with a woman at his job. And I was distraught. I told him, if we're going to do this, I'm going to do it too. So that took some time to work out. I've heard of men dating other women, but women dating other men when they're already married was completely foreign to me. And the more I thought about it, I said, you know what, maybe it does make sense for equality, <laughs> that if I want something, that Kenya should be able to have that same thing too. You want mangoes, um, Kahari? Mangoes in exchange for book bag search. Okay. Voila. Sounds pretty fair. <laughs> From the time that we opened, we told our kids about open marriage. And it meant that mommy and daddy could love more people, and they just got it. They didn't have any issues with polyamory. I'm not gonna lie, we're not really a normal family. Why? It's not something that I'm like, hey everyone, look, my parents are polyamorous. They help me through all my relationships, giving me advice when I want it and when I don't. I mean, they don't really care. The thing is that, especially in high school, this whole idea of like poly, just being as young as I am, I think it's more for adults. Mm -hmm. I think we should do some seminars at your school. They would just not allow you in the school. I don't want to talk about poly. I want to. I don't think people know how to relate. I feel like if you did a seminar, I just imagined you on stage being all like, "Oh, hello," throwing condoms into the crowd. Like, <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. A typical day for Carl and I is we wake up, we get the kids off to school, and then we rush to the office. Don't make my baby leave without a coat. So no, I cannot drive. No, you cannot so, drive. As in like, no, for real, no, or like, because in Japanese, no means yes. So you're, you're saying yes in Japanese, no in English. I'm saying no in all languages on the planet. Bye, guys. After opening their marriage to the world of polyamory, the pair decided it was time to spread the love and open their own business. We have a love academy called Juju Mama Love Academy. From jealous partners to steamy hookups, they've been through it all, and now use their unique experiences to guide other couples wanting to dip their toes into the polyamory pool. Carl and I have been open for 12 years. We enjoy it so much that we support other people in coming into this lifestyle. You understand, men get the hearts open. We deal with every kind of problem from people cheating on their spouse, people who want to open their relationship, people who just want to learn how to relate with one person. Men feeling a sense of guilt from the past that they have not resolved that comes out in their current relationships. Polyamorous relationships are becoming a lot more common. We educate people in what we call the new paradigm. The new paradigm of love. Today's clients are sex coach Luna and her boyfriend, graphic designer Mason. Mason and I met in a grocery store and immediately had a crush on him and was totally infatuated. 
our relationship took off really organically and naturally. The couple recently opened up their relationship, but their transition into polyamory has been bumpier than expected after Luna started dating one of her boyfriend's closest friends. Will Juju Mama be able to bring calm to this brewing storm? I knew Taylor before I knew Mason. We were just friends. Like, I didn't see him in a romantic way at all. And he became one of my best friends while I was dating Mason all this time. It just kind of naturally happened that we're like, whoa, we have feelings. This is really intense. And that was the hardest part. It got really real at that point. Mason, good to meet you. <laughs> what happens if I can't handle this? This whole thing is kind of an experiment. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's worked. What's going on in your relationship at this time? Um, Who wants to start? I'm happy to. Sure. We came together saying like, we want to explore openness. We want to know what that looks like. For me, I was always like, let's jump into this. So that was my philosophy. Her philosophy was like, let's go slow. Let's do real careful. And I appreciate that so much. But what happened was the flip side happened. She jumped into it. She fell in love. Um, and I'm still like being really careful because I don't want to push her away and all this stuff. So it's really interesting how that happened. Mason has this philosophy about um, like picking the fruit of opportunity when it's ripe and not wanting it to go to waste. And I said that that's so beautiful for so many aspects and I feel like I'm to be cultivated. So and then when him wanting to be with other people or see other people, it was just like, it felt like the energy was all over the place mm -hmm. and um, it was scary. What is it that you feel about her other partner. I don't know how we would be doing this, and I don't really know how anybody else does do it. <laughs> but honestly, like right now, she's like, you wanted this, you know, and all the stuff that comes up with that, you know, but still, I mean, that's like one, one defense when I, you know, when I'm in my <laughs> Like she's got a lover and he's incredible. He's my dear friend too. I can like authentically say like, I love their love and I can still be stuck in my own place like when they're together and. There's definitely fears of him thinking that I'm gross or like not a good partner because I'm desiring another man. Sure. And to be sexual and have sex with another man. If you could wave the magic wand and you can have this relationship any way you want it, how would that look for you? Well, maybe a fourth person would be really great, you know? So in my mind, like maybe it would be beautiful if I had another lover who I trust and she trusts. We want to be life partners, we want to have kids together. And if I could do that and like just feel really good about all that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, Mason, I have to commend you because most people do not face their emotions enough to show them to anyone else. These learnings go on top of what you guys are experiencing with Polly and how vulnerable you're becoming and how you guys are moving through that. But the relationship itself needs this membrane yeah. you understand yeah. just like we want yeah. his presence and his power and his yeah. choice and his claiming to be yeah. like the sun that always shines yeah mm -hmm. so cultivating that is going to help you to be receptive to him when he comes back and goes away and comes back realizing like we have to claim one another and i claim her and she claims me <laughs> plays like that feels really good that feels really strong <laughs> I love claiming. I'm yeah. sorry. It makes my body dance. Yeah. No, and then Claim can. me, honey. Yeah, yes. Like, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, please. Thank you. I, I feel good about you all's ability to, to be successful in this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where the journey starts. Yes. Yes. Well, let's go. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> With their first session under their belt, Will Mason and Luna managed to put Carl and Kenya's advice into practice before they return in two months' time. The session was wonderful. The scariest thing is like, is there longevity here? You know, uh, that might come up and be like, is this possible? Is this a real thing that we can really do? And hearing them speak and be like, yes, this is, this is a thing you can do. It's a lot of work. It's a new paradigm. It's so much work. <laughs> and it's worth it. It's worth it. It's so worth it. it. <laughs> While Mason and Luna are just starting out, Carl and Kenya are seasoned pros at the poly game, but their first innings were just as challenging. Discussing polyamory was extremely difficult at first. There were a lot of arguments, a lot of emotions. It was really challenging. Monday, what time can you do it? You said you have a date that night. When I first went on a date, it felt like I was betraying my husband. It was very painful for me. I started having all these you know, thoughts and images of her having sex and like my jealousies and insecurities really came out. I didn't feel good about myself. 
Opening our marriage to polyamory has made our marriage stronger because we can actually tell the truth. We are very open and honest with each other. So for the first time in our lives, I felt like we were able to, to be completely and totally transparent on all levels. And this honesty even stretches to vetting one another's potential Tinder dates. Look at this, 50 miles away. I need to change my parameter on here so it only gives me guys within five mile radius. I just, no, that's ridiculous. Baby. You need to date guys, even if they're an hour away, it's fine. Oh, he's kind of cute. Oh, he's 32. <laughs> he's 10 years younger than me. You know, I meet most of my guys on Tinder. I met this great guy on Tinder. He was a male nurse. Oh my God, can you imagine? The way he touches you. The way he knows how to deal with your body. He's a male nurse. Not doctor, but nurse nurturing sweetness. He was very awesome. Most of the men I date are younger. I mean, why not? My husband is older than me, so I already have an older guy. I need younger men. Neanderthal. Ooh, he's cute. You like him? Yeah, he looks like my type, doesn't he? There you go. <laughs> somebody who's worth the drive, right? There we go. See? I might see how drive to women? go see. <laughs> That's how it is with women. It's like, you know, nah. Oh, he's 500 miles away. That works for me. That it works just depends. Me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would drive to see you 500 miles away if I saw you. Oh, you're just being nice. No, I think you're fine. After a long day, it's time to unwind and time for Kenya to loosen up in her weekly date with salsa dancer hey. Severin. Are you doing okay? Yeah, how are you doing? I don't put a limit on the number of partnerships that I can have. I have partners here in Asheville. I have partners in other cities. I have my husband, so I don't know how many partners I have. <laughs> Nice. We should go Saturday. I used to feel like just a mother and a wife, you know, like my fun, my magnetism, my youth, my sensual energy was depleting. Now I feel like I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a lover, I'm a goddess. Carl's rendezvous is with long-standing lover and mother of six, Ebony. Carl's girlfriends are interesting. I get along with his partners who are married, I get along with his partners who have so much common sense that they don't try to push me out of my place. But for the others, it is more challenging. I like Carl for a lot of reasons. He's very affectionate and very sexual, and I love that. I'll prefer married men. <laughs> In terms of how much I talk to Kenya about my girlfriends or the women I'm seeing, I generally don't talk to her about that a lot. I just prefer to have my relationships to be separate, meaning a certain level of intimacy between you know, me and my other partners. In terms of Kenya's partners, um, you know, I tend to always get along with them. We don't buddy-buddy all the time and that kind of thing, but I do get along with all of her partners. I like her partners. I think she picks really good guys. And 39-year-old Akur might just be one of Kenya's great choices. She's been seeing him since 2013. I only got love for Carl. He's older than me, he has a lot of experience, so he's like a big brother. In Western culture here in America, women are not supposed to have a sex drive, we're not supposed to desire other men when we're married. It's taboo, it's taboo. Women desire other men when they're married all the time. That's why 50 million women read Fifty Shades of Grey. And it looks like Kenya might be taking a leaf out of her favorite erotic novel, as her date gets steamy. When Carl and I have sex, it's very healing. It's very energizing. But when I have sex with a new partner, it's like that fireworks and craziness, you know, it's like, it's just two different things. I need them both as a married woman of 22 years. And to be able to have them both is great. It's been two months, and Carl and Kenya are following up with Mason and Luna. Last time we met them, they were struggling putting polyamory into practice. Today they're back, and this time Luna's other partner, Taylor, has joined them. 
Babe, what do you think about uh, today's schedule? We have Mason, Luna, and Taylor this morning. Um, well, I am excited. I feel like they need a lot of support. Luna and Mason first came to see us because they had no idea how to have an open relationship. Yet, they found themselves in an open relationship. How would we describe our relationship? Well, um, our relationship is... My eyes. Are you crying because you're so in love with us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just so emotional. <laughs> I think Luna was concerned that if she were to be honest about her feelings, that it might, you know, make one of her boyfriends a bit distant. One way to describe it might be uh, Luna and I are live-in partners, and, and Taylor and Luna are lovers, and Taylor and I are friends. I will tell you a secret. Tell me a secret. I had a private session with Taylor about two weeks ago. This is not supposed to be known. This is supposed to be private. Okay. But he was in tears and he was having a hard time because it was Mason and Luna's night. He felt like he could only be attracted to Luna and that's not going to work for this open relationship. Recently, it's been about once a week that I've spent the night at Taylor's house. Our relationship seems complex and complicated just to be straight up about it. And it's understandable. You know, Luna's a beautiful woman, very outgoing, you know, she's got that bubbly personality, so that can be intoxicating. So it's, it's perfectly understandable why he might feel the way he feels. This new dynamic has changed and affected our relationship. In, our, our relationship? In, in, like our, Taylor and I's relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. You, yours and mine. Um, I mean, part of that's, I guess, why we're doing this whole coaching thing. When you have men who want to fight for position, mm -hmm. You have a problem. This doesn't feel like a like male bravado kind no. of battle. This feels like a uh, a bit of some insecurity. Yep. On both of the men's parts. So you think we have a an intervention? I think we have an intervention on our hands today. Okay. And this is make or break for them. Will their next session with Carl and Kenya help this threesome iron out some of the creases in their love triangle? Or are there still some problems left to be solved? Well, welcome everybody. Appreciate you all uh, coming in to have a little chat about you all's relationship. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Kenya's excited about this conversation. I am so excited. You guys have no idea because we haven't seen each other in a while. Yeah. But I need to tell you that I did have a secret session with Taylor. Uh oh. So, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Luna, catch us up. Ooh. <laughs> From last time I was with y'all, um, I feel like it was really, really hard to deal with jealousy, specifically with um, with Mason being with other with other women. I was going camping yesterday, and I was going to ride there with a friend who I've been intimate with before, maybe sleep in her tent. I don't know where she's at. She had a boyfriend now or what? But Luna's like, do you think you guys will have sex? And I was like, honestly, I don't know. It, that's the killer for you. Right. Yeah, it's totally. Not, it's, it's not even about him having intimacy with another woman. Nope. It's about if he falls in love with another woman. Right. I mean, yeah. Taylor I cannot be another Mason I can never because his support. Another. Never His support is not going to be the same as yeah. Mason's. It's nothing against him. Sorry. They're just two <laughs> different individuals in your life. It's still challenging, but I've definitely evolved a little bit of being able to handle my emotions right. a bit more. How are you feeling when, when she goes to see Taylor or the concept of her seeing someone else even mm -hmm. outside of you and Taylor? Mm -hmm. uh, rationally, uh, I think it's great. I support it fully, and yet still like she'll come home from being with Taylor next day, and like I just can't help but to kind of be a little cold or a little bitter sometimes. You know, okay. I'm like, man, like I support this, and still like I'm just feeling these things. Okay. I can't not feel them. Okay. You know. All right, what you got, Taylor? Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> so historically, like throughout our relationship, like I wanted more time. I'm not getting that connection that I want. What's been really challenging with my relationship with Taylor is like energetically like it's really challenging to have two primary partners because right. I want a relationship with myself and right. my and my ladies being pulled in both directions right. becomes this like oh I should be hanging out with you oh we should because we'd be so good collaborating doing this thing. Taylor should know exactly what his role is. Well, I I'll see you once a week for two hours. Take it or leave it. What I hear from Luna is, oh, I do want to spend more time with you. Or I do want to go to things with you and then go home with you. And I do want to do all these things with you, but then they don't happen. Right. So that's it's confusing. For Taylor and I, I'm like, oh my gosh, we could do all these things. But since we're not getting the right amount of time together, 
Taylor started putting in like uh, ultimatums. There's still some hurts around that of when it comes to trust because okay. of this like control and ultimatum energy. Are these hard questions? I think so. Yeah. I don't want you to feel like hard time, <laughs> and you're. It's okay to cry too. It's <laughs> fine. Like, release the bubble. But w women have not been trained to do this. This is our work, intuitive mm -hmm. work. Which of these men is most emotionally available to you? I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I think it depends. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we are like on the end of whatever phase just happened. Mm -hmm. It feels less intense than it has been. Do you guys have a contract? That's what we're leaving here with today. Mm -hmm. A contract. I don't feel no containers, no contract, yeah. no spelling right. out of what is what. Yeah. I don't. You guys must have contract. Let's really deal with the nitty gritty of what you all are to each other. Because even if you if you get into the contract and you want to shift it later, you renegotiate the contract. Mm -hmm. We've renegotiated a thousand times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, bottom line, we want all of us to thrive, right? Right. I, mean, I want mm -hmm. Luna to thrive, whatever she needs to thrive. Right. All right, that's, that's a wrap. wrap. Great session you guys. Doing you guys. Okay? Oh, man. You gonna do this? <laughs> Having put a contract into place with Mason as Luna's primary partner and Taylor as her secondary, they leave the session with a much clearer perspective on where they all stand. Yes! We're going to do it! <laughs> I do agree with the conclusions that we came to with Carl and Kenya. I think it was really helpful and really affirming. I feel validated and I felt, I feel hopeful. Yeah, I felt, I felt good, I felt really good. I want, I want more coaching with them. Oh my goodness, the session was fantastic. I feel like Luna and Mason and Taylor finally told the truth. I really can sense tension when people are not telling the truth. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, all three of them again. I think the issues they had before are beginning to be resolved. I think they're actually on a path to healing the relationship. Um, they have more work to do. I think the key is communication. Can we pause for a second? A lot of what you're saying is coming across as like, oh Taylor, you have all these needs, but I can't meet all your needs. Go find yourself another partner. I'm like, F you, man. Do you know the reason I felt that is because of the things that you've said? You've said, oh, I do want to be partners with you. Oh, I want to live with you. I want to have kids with both you and Mason. Like, I want to share this space together. Those are desires and were true at the time. And I need to be careful with my words. That's been like the challenging theme of this relationship is me feeling like I'm giving and you taking and not having this reciprocal thing. Right now it feels really clear to me how much you having another partner would like give us hope to continue relating. Like I don't think that the way we're currently relating is going to work. I'm not opposed to that and I'm actively pursuing that. The way it was being portrayed is like I'm just like this ooh like Luna 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 Luna. Yeah. In reality like that's not actually what's happening. Real poly issues. <laughs> Although open relating might not be for everyone, and who knows what the future holds for Mason, Luna and Taylor, there's no denying polyamory is on the rise. And for Carl and Kenya, it's good for business, mm -hmm. and even better for their marriage. The struggles we see in society, um, I think we need those struggles in order to appreciate love. If all we had was love in this society, then we wouldn't really appreciate it as much. What is the future of love? Well, the future of love is community. Humans need community. We're creating the new culture. We're creating the future of love. <laughs> I think love is ever present today. I don't think we have a, a love issue. I think we have issues around understanding and accepting each other and ourselves, but the love is, is here and it's always gonna be here.